All right, y'all, we are back with another video. Now, this one right here is also coming by Forgotten History. Like I said, I will leave the original video in the description. Now, this one right here said that the uh, the first black slave owner in the colonies was a uh, guy named Anthony Johnson. Now, this is my first time seeing this video about like a, uh, a black man, a first black man being a slave owner. In the colonies, like I don't know how true that is, but hey, you already know uh, a lot of schools don't teach you anything. A lot of teachers, they only teach you what they want you or what they want to teach you. But they don't, a lot of times, they don't really just tell you everything about history. That's the reason why I be saying I have to do my own research sometimes. I may have to go watch some videos and, and look up stuff myself. And I even get good information uh, from a lot of you that be in the comment section. I appreciate everybody that leaves a comment. Cause like I said, your comment helps me out. So uh, I don't mind like trying to learn and uh, listen. I have no problem with that at all. But like I said, we're going to go ahead and dive straight into it. Make sure you hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. Shout out to everybody that been showing so much love. Everybody been leaving positive comments in the comment section. And I also want to thank everybody that clicked on this video for the very first time. Without further ado, let's dive straight into it. Let's go. While slavery existed in the American colonies through the establishment of the United States as a country until the end of the Civil War, there have been many misconceptions about slavery in general. Most Americans are not aware that there were some black former slaves and freemen who also owned black slaves, mm. and some became very prominent in politics as well, despite the racial prejudice that existed. Some black slave owners inherited their slaves from their masters who were themselves freed in their wills. Others were either born free or emancipated by their masters and then bought their own slaves, while others were able to buy their own freedom and that of their families. Who were these black slave owners and how did they attain such a status in a white dominated society? What set them apart from other blacks and what made them comparable to whites in some of the colonies and later states? What changed in colonial society altering the status of indentured servants to lifetime slaves, and why? Who was Anthony Johnson? Hello, I'm Colin Heaton, former soldier, Marine Corps scout sniper, history professor, historian and book author, and we will answer these questions and other issues on this segment of Forgotten History. All right, let's go. The vast majority of African Americans in the United States were enslaved, in all of the states, not just the South. Our first person of note is Anthony Johnson, who was born in Angola and captured by Portuguese slave traders, and he was given the name Antonio. Then his captors sold him into the Atlantic slave trade. He sailed to Virginia in 1621 aboard the ship James. The Virginia muster, or census, of 1624 lists his name as Antonio, not given and he was recorded as a Negro in the notes column and indentured. Antonio, later Anthony, was bought by a colonist in Virginia, but treated as an indentured servant, which was not unusual, and Antonio worked for a merchant at the Virginia Company, and he became a Catholic. Johnson was sold as an indentured servant to a white planter named Bennett to work on his Virginia tobacco farm. Technically, he was not a slave, because mm. the slave laws were not passed until 1661 in Virginia, so prior to that date, Africans were not officially considered to be slaves in that colony. According to the records kept by his benefactor and the existing documents, Anthony was nearly killed in the Indian Massacre of 1622 when the Powhatan Indians attacked colonists in the Tidewater region of Virginia. On Good Friday, they raided the settlement, including the Bennett Farm, where Antonio worked, and killed 52 of the 57 men present. Antonio apparently fought back and was wounded and earned the esteem of his master. In 1623, a black woman named Mary arrived aboard the ship Margaret and John. She was brought to work on the same plantation as Antonio, where she was the only woman present. Antonio and Mary married and lived together for more than 40 years. Around 1635, Antonio and Mary completed their indentured servitude, and Antonio changed his name to Anthony Johnson. Oh. He first entered the legal record as an unindentured 
free man when he purchased a calf in 1647. During this early period, free blacks enjoyed relative equality with whites, and about 20% of the free blacks in Virginia owned their own homes and property. In 1662, the Virginia colony passed a law that children in the colony were born with the social status of their mother. This meant that the children of slave women were born into slavery, even if their fathers were free, European, Christian, and white. This was a reversal of English common law, which held that the children of English subjects took the status of their father. The Virginia colonial government expressed the opinion that since Africans were not Christians, common law could not and did not apply to them, even if they converted, as Anthony Johnson did. On July 24, 1651, Johnson acquired 250 acres of land under the existing headright system when he bought the contracts of five indentured servants, one being his son, Richard Johnson. Under the headright system, if a man were to bring indentured servants over to the colonies, and in this particular case, Johnson brought five servants, he was owed 50 acres a head for servant. Mm. The land in question was located on the Great Naswata Creek, which flowed into the Punkateague River in Northampton County, Virginia. This was where Anthony Johnson operated his successful tobacco farm, and one of his indentured servants was John Cassor, who became one of the first men to be declared indentured for life, effectively a slave. Under the 1645 Virginia Taxation Act, all Negro men and women and all other men from the age of 16 to 60 shall be judged tithable. So after a fire in 1652 caused him great financial damage to his property, he applied for relief in the courts and won. Back then, people were taxed, not property, but indentured servants and later slaves were taxed as property. It is unclear from the records why the Johnson women were exempted, but the change gave them the same social standing as white women who were not taxed. Oh. In the colonies back then, one was judged more on their religion as opposed to race or ethnicity in general. So until the advent of actual legal slavery, upward mobility was possible for many races. During the case, the justices noted that Anthony and Mary Johnson had lived in Virginia for over 30 years and were highly respected in their community. In fact, a 1653 Northampton County Court document lists Mary as Anthony's wife. By the 1650s, Anthony and Mary Johnson were farming 250 acres in Northampton County, while their two sons owned 550 acres. They also had additional indentured persons under contract, but the exact numbers are not known. His son, Richard Johnson, also had his own indentured persons, probably given to him by his father, who were effectively slaves with a shelf life. At some point, if contracted, they would have to be set free. In 1854, John Cassor, who had been sentenced to indentured service for life for his escaping a previous owner in 1640, filed a suit against Johnson, claiming his indentured service had expired, and he went to work for Robert and George Parker. Johnson filed a freedom suit to get Cassor back, but Parker won. What is amazing in retrospect was that Johnson, a black man, was not only able to file a petition to the court, but he was able to testify and give evidence in the court which illustrates the rather egalitarian system oh. in place at that time. However, Johnson appealed to the county court of Northampton County, Virginia, and the court reversed its ruling and sent Cassor back to Johnson in 1855, and Parker was forced to pay Johnson compensation. Then Cassor made history, as he was probably the first person who was declared slave for life in Virginia. That means see that's what I be talking about. Like a lot of this I'm hearing, I'm like, who is Anthony Johnson? I've never heard of him before. I never heard anybody talk about him, especially in school and stuff. And that's the reason why I say I have to start doing my own research. And then they saying somebody that he was like really never a slave, and then come to find out he uh, eventually start owning slave uh, slaves and stuff like that. See, and this is the type of stuff I be saying, man. Like you you hardly ever learn anything about slavery and stuff like that in school. That's the reason why I said at the beginning, man, when you be in these so these certain schools or certain teachers, they just kind of tell you what you want to hear or, or what they uh, want to tell you. But they, do, they don't go into like detail and tell you everything that you need to know because I had no idea about this. All I knew was uh, black people were slaves. I knew like white people uh, was enslaved as well. You know what I'm saying? But I've not heard of, a, like I said, a black man 
black person in general uh, being a slave owner in the colonies. I didn't hear anything about this. So that's why I'm, I'm glad I uh, checked out this video to kind of see what was going on. And I know a lot of you wanted me to check it out. I'm like, man, this is crazy. I had no idea. And it seemed like every time he went to court, he won. It seemed like every time he get the, he went to court, he won. He was compensated. Boy. He's that his black owner, Anthony Johnson, first person who was declared slave for life in Virginia. Mm. That means that his black owner, Anthony Johnson, was probably the very first slave owner in all of the colonies, himself a black man. That's what I was saying, the first slave owner in the country. That's what I'm saying. I had no idea. I know a lot of you probably been coming and said, hey, dog, how you didn't know? Look, I could have got on this camera and said I already knew that. I could have said that, then I'd be lying, and I'm not going to do that. If I didn't know, I'd get on this camera and say, hey, I didn't know. I never heard nobody talk about it. Nobody never mentioned this to me. I'm just not hearing this in this video that it was a black slave owner named and where they say his name was Antonio, and then he later changed it to Anthony. Man. But like I said before, I'm always one of the ones that don't mind taking time out to learn. Uh I don't care how old I am or and a lot of people should feel that way. No matter how old you are, you're never too old to learn. You know what I'm saying? And I don't mind saying, hey, I want to learn. I want to know what happened or uh, what did he did. You know what I'm saying? So I have no problem with that at all. There were both black and white indentured servants, the whites being the most Irish of all, who, like the blacks, were also sentenced to lifetime servitude before Casser's case. The difference was that the whites could eventually purchase their freedom in most cases. Mm. Therefore, Anthony Johnson... Did they say that the whites can purchase their freedom? Also sentenced to lifetime servitude before Casser's case. The difference was that the whites could eventually purchase their freedom mm. in most cases. I didn't know that. Therefore, Anthony Johnson was apparently not only the first African American whose right to own a slave for life was recognized in the colonies, he was therefore technically the first actual legal slave owner, regardless of being black or white, mm. as established by the Virginia court. Soon afterwards, slavery was legal in all of the colonies. Later, Johnson moved his family to Somerset County, Maryland, and leased 300 acres for tobacco farming for 99 years, which he called Tory's Vineyards. When Anthony Johnson died in 1670, that August, his plantation was given to Robert Parker, not to Johnson's children. The justification mm -hmm. delivered by an old- Oh, I often say that, why was it not given to his children if that was his, but it was gave to somebody else? In 1670, that August, his plantation was given to Robert Parker, not to Johnson's children. Wow. The justification delivered by an all-right jury ruled that Anthony's land in Virginia that was given to his sons could be seized because he was a Negro and by consequence an alien. As a result, the 50 acres that Anthony had given to his son Richard wound up in the hands of his wealthy white neighbor George Parker. It didn't oh. matter that Richard, a free man, had lived on okay. the land with his wife and children for five years. A judge then had ruled that Anthony Johnson, as he was not a citizen of the colony because he was black, but he did own his own slaves, could maintain his property. What soon arrived after Johnson's death was a system of legal slavery in which enslavement was lifelong, hereditary, and based solely on race and effectively established in all of the colonies in the beginning of the 18th century. As a result, Johnson has been referred to historically as the black patriarch of the first community of Negro property owners in America. He was the first black slave owner to be involved in a court case that resulted in an indentured black man, John Cassar, to be legally determined as a slave for life. In effect, because hereditary slavery was not in effect during his period of ownership of Castor, mm -hmm. the slave for life and others he purchased, it is arguable that Anthony Johnson was in fact the first actual slave owner in the American colonies. And he was a black man. We hope you enjoyed this segment of Forgotten History. Wow. Like I said, I had no idea about this. this is, like I said before, it's my first time uh, hearing about uh, Anthony Johnson uh, being the first black slave owner. Matter of fact, uh, I always said that I didn't like uh, that slave thing like from the beginning I wish that nobody was held against that word and, and were forced to do something that they didn't want to do 
So I didn't like the whole slave thing, regardless of what color you is. I feel like should nobody own another person or tell a person what they gonna do if they don't is consequences. So I don't agree with that at all. White, black, I don't care what color. Should nobody tell nobody else what to do or, or when to take a bath, when to go outside. If you don't do this, this is gonna happen to you and stuff like that. But man, I like I said, I had no idea about uh, Anthony Johnson being the first black slave owner in the colonies. And no idea at all, but hey, you listen, you live, you learn, and I'm here to learn. And I have no problem saying that. And uh, if there's any more videos like this y'all think I need to check out, I don't mind getting on the camera and saying, hey, I didn't know that. Yes, I know a lot about uh, slavery and stuff that been going on, but I ain't going to know everything. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not going to know everything. I'm not going to act like I know everything. You know? So uh, I appreciate you all for watching. Y'all get in the comment section. Let me know more about this. Do y'all know more about Anthony Johnson that y'all think I need to know about? I'll be uh, in the comment section reading and stuff like that. I appreciate you all for watching, and I'll catch y'all in the next one.